least two billion dollars in a national bushfire recovery fund. Let's go live to our reporters in the field. First, a weekend sunrise presenter Matt Doran of Surf Beach, south of Batemans Bay. Matt, devastating scenes where you are. It really has been, uh, Koshi. I'm in a particular area called Surf Beach on the south coast here where it's been really luck of the draw for the residents here, whether their homes survived, and that's largely thanks to the efforts of the firefighters here. I spoke to one man a little earlier, Peter Norton, who lost everything. Matt, it's been tough, there's no doubt, but um, what can you do? What can you do, Matt? We move on, we'll start again. Insurance company's been brilliant, GIO has been fantastic. They've put money in our account already, I can't thank them enough. I came away with no socks, and your man has given me a pair of socks. We've given him a pair. Don't say we don't look after you, Peter. Here's a family. Here's a family that was a little luckier and have got smiles on their faces, which is wonderful. Uh, your home was saved, John. Uh, this was thanks largely to the incredible work of the fireys. Uh, absolutely. Um, we have to thank the fireys in general as a whole, uh, but particularly the Ingleside group from the Northern Beaches. Uh, I believe they were here. And uh, had it not been for them, the whole lot would have gone, absolutely for sure. They're pretty brave, aren't they, Mel? Yeah. This, how, this car you might be able to see behind me has been used in a variety bash for how many years? It's done 27 consecutive bashes. Uh, it's done its last bash. It's done, that. No, I don't think I can fix that one. Um, yeah, right. But everybody in the variety um, family would remember it as 450. Come so. for a wander with me, guys, if you would. Um, we're going to sort of meander up here towards the house to show just how close the fire came to your property. Talk me through what we're going to see over here, which is some of the uh, glass that was actually blown right out of the window of your kitchen. Is that right, Talk me right. through it. Yeah, actually, Lockie was here. He would have... What happened, Lockie? So, pretty much the fire just came over the hill and just ripped its way through. And the fire is not here, just as the door over here blew. You might be able to see, if you just creep around there, showing my cameraman, you can see all the glass uh, that has been blown out there, which is just incredible. And I want you to tell me, John, uh, tell me about the note that was left on your fridge by the firefighters, as if they didn't have enough on their minds, they had the presence of mind to say what? Well, we had a bit of a chuckle. There was a note on the fridge that said uh, something to the effect of, sorry about the holes in the ceiling, the door was gone. Uh, I'm assuming they were just punching holes in the in the ceiling just to make sure it wasn't still burning. Uh, so we had a bit of a chuckle at that. <laughs> okay, aren't they great? They're just a, just an incredible thing. They've got the presence of mind to worry about the damage in your roof. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing that they could take the time just five seconds to write a little note for us. Yeah. Can't hang them enough, really. They, they, they do a cracking job. Uh, guys, thank you for sharing your story with me. I'm uh, thrilled that you still have your beautiful home here. It's a testament to what they do. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and thanks to the Rural Fire Service. You guys are the best. Thank you. What a wonderful message. Sam and Koshi. That's fantastic, isn't it? Isn't that great? The fire is apologising for... Sense of humour. I suppose they like punch a, a hole in the ceiling so they can check there's no fire yeah, in, in the, the next level of the house. Yeah. Aren't they lucky, that family? Um, let's go to Victoria now. And Nathan Templeton's in Bansdale, which is the main control centre for Victoria's East. Um, Nathan, a bit of rain about, which is uh, good for a few days. Yeah, that's right. The wet, cool conditions have just eased the threat momentarily and that's allowed everyone to try to get in closer to the fire ground and that's where these guys come in. I wanted to show you a pretty inspiring sight along Main Street, Bansdale. These are army bushmasters, six of them are lined up. They are sitting there ready and waiting for firefighters to jump in so they'll transport them to some difficult to access areas. You can also see a fuel truck driving through. There's also been a procession uh, of hay coming in as well so every Everyone chipping in uh, and really this is what the next 48 hours is all about these guys are going to get in there drop off supplies assess the territory and see where it's safe to go a bit of a lull uh, in the fire threat and some more friendly weather conditions authorities really want to make some progress before things heat up again uh, later in the week on Thursday and Friday so this is what they're going to be doing for the next couple of days Importantly, we've also had some revised figures from the State Control Centre. We now have no one listed as missing in Victoria and no fires burning at emergency level. That is fabulous news. All right, team, thank you for that. Appreciate it.
All right, billionaire James Packer has become the latest big name to dig deep in support of bushfire relief. Through his Crown Resorts company, Packer has donated $5 million for volunteer firefighters and charities providing support to victims. Shane Warne is also auctioning his baggy green with the current bid at just over $315,000. Isn't that fantastic? While comedian Celeste Barber's fundraiser has now topped more than $35 million. Let's get the rest of the day's news. Here's Angie. Thank you, Sam.